Welcome back everybody, I'm Dr. Christy Smurl. In this video, I'm going to respond to a question that was asked after I posted the last video on the Yamas. So I've been covering the eight limbs of yoga as we find in Patanjali's Yoga Sutras. And the first limb are the Yamas. Two of those Yamas are Brahmacharya and Ahimsa. And the question that was asked is, how do we practice celibacy and vegetarianism in the real world? And this is a really good question. And this often becomes a blockage for many people on their pathway to yoga based off of misinterpretation. So brahmacharya. What does brahmacharya actually mean when we dissect the word? Well, brahma, what's brahma? That supreme creative energy, yeah? And charya is seen as like a mastery, mastery over our supreme creative forces. Now, when we look at celibacy, we're looking at controlling our sexual energies, our sexual forces. Well, sexual energy can be used to fuel our spiritual energy. So we fuel our spiritual reproduction or spiritual children rather than physical procreation. Now, when we take a look at sex in general, sex can often lead us down the slippery slope into being controlled by lust. If we want to be in full control over our spiritual evolution, we want to be in full control of all vacillations of our emotions, including lust. Now, lust is considered rajasic. Now, within our existence, we have three gunas, rajas, tamas, and sattva. Sattva is very balanced and pure energy, which leads us and fuels us towards our spiritual evolution. Now, rajas and tamas are necessary frictions or necessary complementary energies. Rajas is solar, masculine, action, whereas tamas is more potential, creation, yin, and lunar energy. And these energies move back and forth through the course of a day, and we want to keep proper balance over them. When we think too much about sex, or specifically lust, we become rajasic, agitated, distracted with outward flow of energy. This takes away from our inner spiritual job, our dharma. When we have too much sexual release and excessive amounts of ejaculation, we are drained of a very precious substance called ojas. I'll discuss ojas in depth in another video when I start talking about Ayurveda. But this is the supreme energy within our body that bathes our tissues, brings solid immune system, brings spiritual power to us. So when we ejaculate too much, we lose that ojas, and it can take a long time to replenish. So sexual responsibility is important. In Ayurveda, they actually talk about sex in depth as one of the balances of life. And they talk about how in the summertime, we want to reduce the amount of ejaculation or sexual activity we have so that we can nourish the body in the heat of the summer. Whereas in the winter, we have a little bit more of that substance available to us where we can have more sexual release without being depleted. But everybody's different. It depends on their physical makeup, according to Ayurveda, and where they're balanced in accordance to their doshas, season, and seasons of life. Now, let's switch gears and talk about ahimsa and vegetarianism. Now, I often emphasize that we should not base our ego off of what we eat. And we also understand that Ayurveda and yoga do not require vegetarianism. In many physical and uh, medical conditions, Ayurveda recommends specific meats and quantities of animal products to maintain health. 
But for the normal healthy person, we can find alternative sources of protein without taking the life of an animal. Let's just put that aside and talk about animal products from the standpoint of those gunas that I just barely introduced. Rajas, tamas, sattva. We want maximum sattva, right? Peacefulness, balance, harmony, intelligent energy for our spiritual pursuits. When we eat too much meat, as well as other food substances, we become tamasic, heavy in nature, inertia sets in, darkness sets in. This is not conducive to our spiritual evolution. Now, naturally, we have to go through different checks and balances, a little bit more activity to get something done, a little bit more rest to get something done. But we want to balance rajas and tamas, we want to maximize that sattva within us. So I'll talk later in other videos about foods that are rajasic and foods that are tamasic, activities that are rajasic and activities that are tamasic. When we eat too much meat, we are bringing down our energy vibration with tamas automatically. When we have too much sexual ejaculation, we are losing our inner ojas, that power. And when we are too lustful and not in control of our mind in regards to sex, we become lustful and rajasic and we also lose energy. So it's all about self-mastery, self-realization, and proper maintenance of the physics of your energy. So I hope that was helpful. And I'll talk more about these other topics in later videos. Have a wonderful day, everybody.